Uh, okay, welcome back everyone from lunch. Uh, I'm going to suggest we make a start just to keep on time. And uh, so the theme of this afternoon's session is networks over time. And uh, if you know Edo, you'll recognize that I'm not in fact Edo. I'm just imputing for him. And uh, my charge was to uh, say a few words about the session and how the talks relate to one another. And just to give you some things to think about. Um, so here we are, sort of the middle of the uh, afternoon of the third day. And uh, here is the schedule for the afternoon. Uh, we'll have uh, two talks. First, uh, Mladen will speak, and then Sophus. Uh, these talks are sort of themed together in a way that I'll talk about. Uh, then we'll break for coffee, uh, 1430 to 1500. Uh, and then it's back on again with uh, streaming and sketching algorithms. And so we'll have two talks again. And then at about 10 minutes till 4, we'll do about, we've budgeted for about 40 minutes of wrap-up discussion. Uh, so I'll work to keep things roughly to time. Uh, so we're starting a few minutes late, but otherwise things will run pretty much to time, and we'll, we'll collect that overlap in the coffee break. Um, so uh, where are we in the context of the workshop? Uh, much of the preceding couple of days has been devoted to the following problem. Uh, given one instantiation of a network or one realization of a network, which we're probably going to model as random or often going to model as random, um, how can we make inference from this one object? Uh, sometimes we're interested in inferring the structure. Sometimes the structure serves uh, as sort of ancillary information on which we condition. Uh, but nevertheless, we're often working from a single snapshot. Uh, and of course, uh, most people who have worked on Real-world problems will tell you that that's not uh, always the way things are. So many networks are, of course, dynamic. They can be dynamic in many different ways. Uh, we can have a sequence of network snapshots over time. We can have uh, experiments that yield replication data where an experimental condition has been varied or time has passed. Uh, we can have diffusions, spreads, cascades over networks. If you think about something like public health, uh, HIV is an epidemic. It diffuses over a sexual contact network and that of intravenous drug users who share needles, etc. But over the years, public health intervention probably actually shapes the structure of that network. So we can even have processes that evolve dynamically on networks and change the structure of the underlying network at the same time as they evolve. Um, so the big difference from a, from a sort of statistical point of view, or at least an asymptotics point of view, is that we now have two dimensions to the analysis, uh, n or the number of nodes, as well as t, time. And so the obvious question here is, can we come up with models that have interesting and sensible limiting behavior as uh, either or both n and t tend toward infinity? And that's something we're going to hear about in the first couple of talks in the session both explicitly and sort of implicitly lurking under the surface. Um, it's worth thinking about the fact that oftentimes we simply integrate time out. If you look at something like the Enron email data set and you just look at the, the set of anyone who's ever emailed anyone else, you're implicitly integrating out time. Right? So that's the simplest thing you can do. Uh, there's also the time-honored tradition of windowing. So think of a scan statistic over the data. Uh, we don't have to be local in space, we can also be local in time. And that's going to feature in both of the first two talks. Um, it's also interesting to think about what does the context of an edge mean in a time varying network? Uh, we might think of instantaneous edges as being more like points in a point process. And that's something that won't feature in these talks, but it's maybe worth thinking about. Um, and then, of course, one can make this arbitrarily complicated. And, and we'll hear sort of bits and pieces of that. But, uh, but of course, um, in order to actually compute anything at the end of the day, the models have to be uh, sort of able to be handled. Um, so there's two themes to the session. Uh, the first two talks are really about models for network evolution. So the basic paradigm is that we have a, a sequence of snapshots of an evolving network. And we have to think carefully about the dynamics of this evolution and get to grips with the sort of transient nature of these edges. Uh, we'll hear about that uh, both in the context of sort of um, uh, sparse precision matrix estimation and then in the, in the context of some empirical work uh, at Facebook. Uh, the second half of the talks, after the coffee break, 
uh, we'll switch and we'll think instead about models of computation. Okay? So the idea here is that in order to work effectively with very, very large graphs, with uh, unbounded <coughs> amounts of data, if you like, uh, we need sort of new algorithmic primitives and new paradigms. Right? And so sketching and streaming are, are two ways to think about this problem. Uh, you can also think about them as relating sort of statistical efficiency of representation or compression and computational efficiency. And that's um, something that Mike Jordan has alluded to at various points uh, in the recent past. Um, so the last thing I'll say there is just that in both cases, there are significant gaps between theory and practice. And it's often called out in the slides of the speakers. So uh, you know, pay attention to uh, pay attention to where those gaps are. They may be something that we want to talk about at the end of the session. Um, so as I said, the first two talks are about sequential observations of an evolving network. So Mladen is going to posit some procedures for you know elicit some models and posit some fitting procedures for these uh, time evolving networks. And you can think of this work as in part being being inspired by the sort of sparse estimation paradigm. Right, so some of you may be familiar with the literature on uh, covariance matrix uh, shrinkage and thresholding. This has a similar sort of flavor. One puts down essentially penalized likelihood models, enforces sparsity, which gives us something that's consistent with the notion of sparse networks, and, uh, and away we go. And the interesting thing to think about there maybe is um, can you identify the right time scale or the right rate of change of the underlying process? Are we talking about smooth dynamics, in which case windowing is a really natural thing to do, uh, kernels? Uh, or are we talking about abrupt changes, in which case you're almost doing like a, you could, do, you could think of this as a non-parametric change detection problem. You know, the network is, is somehow stationary for a while, and then all of a sudden it shifts regimes, and you want to detect that transition point. Um, in the second talk, Sophus is going to ask, uh, from the point of view of data, uh, how the choice of temporal aggregation affects the underlying analysis. Um, so specifically, this again, I think, comes back to correctly identifying sort of time scales of evolution. Uh, whether we integrate time out, whether we use a sliding window that has a long time constant or a short time constant, can have a huge, huge effect on the downstream analysis. And uh, Sophus is going to talk specifically about uh, the problem of tracking communities that evolve over time. So communities can evolve over time, and a node's membership in a particular community can also change. And I would like to ask us to think about, um, you know, could one reduce this to a question of propagating sufficient statistics, right? There's a Kalman filter-esque representation. Uh, there might be something there. And again, we come up to this question of, you know, if an edge is transient, then what is an edge? Are, are, in, are interactions repeated and instantaneous, or are they really representing flows of information? Do we want to treat these things as discrete points, or do we want to think of them as flows? And that touches on several different literatures. Uh, so after the coffee break, we'll switch over to computation, sketching, and streaming. Um, so this is really, as I said, about coming up with ways to analyze very, very large data sets when we're under computation, communication, and storage constraints, potentially. And you can play this game in a number of ways. Uh, Andrew is going to introduce the topic, and he's going to talk about which summaries we can and can't compute in things like n poly log n space. There are some things we know that we can do. There are some things we know provably that we can't do. And this is a kind of like almost like a semi-streaming paradigm because we're allowing ourselves a little bit more than just order in space. Right? Uh, and then finally, to round out the session, Sesh is going to ask a specific question in the streaming context which is, uh, how do we count triangles? Right? So we're talking about a scenario where we start being concerned when things stop working when the graph has, I don't know, a million nodes or something. Right? So we're, we're talking about orders of magnitude above and beyond 10 to the 6. Right? Um, so he'll introduce uh, specifically triangle counting in the streaming paradigm, uh, explain sort of how his result works, uh, talk about some extensions to multigraphs, the basic thing there being that when you derive these algorithms, you assume that edges are never duplicated, and that's never the case, in, or not often the case in practice. And then uh, I really like the slides. There's several points where he says, we have a theorem, and then it doesn't work well in practice at all. So there's a lot of focus here on um, kind of closing this gap between theory and practice, and that's something that we've seen 
uh, come up again and again over the past few days. Um, so without further ado, uh, we will go ahead and switch over and uh, Maladin is first up and uh, so why don't you come on up and we'll do our thing. <laughs>